Hi, Phil Aston here from Now Spinning Magazine with a classic album review. And I promised this one a while ago, and here it is. It's the sensational Alex Harvey Band and the album Next. So I'm going to talk about it from my own feelings and experience and how I discovered this album, what it meant to me and what it means to me now. So for those of you who want really detailed accounts of stats and dates and stuff, go to Wikipedia. Um, this is going to be generated from my own memories, which are reasonably OK. But my feelings of what I think about the album are definitely OK. So it's 1973. In fact, let's just look at this. People used to say it's very hard to find a good this album in good condition because this kind of silver embossing stuff always got kind of scratched and messed up. And this is my original, which I bought in 1973. And at school, because that's where I was, age 14, this album was massive in that year. There was so much going on at that time, 1973. Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. Who do we think we are? Manager Pammon not being out long. Um, there was live dates by Wishbone Ash. There was um, House of the Holy by um, Led Zeppelin. There was tons of stuff going. There was tons of music. I could just keep going on. Good night, King Crimson. Dress very tall. Um, there was obviously the band Slade. You know, there's so much going on. This is just this side of the Atlantic, and every band seem to be different, unique in their sound. Not the Hoople, <laughs> Alice Cooper. There was, everybody said a unique sound from the voice, from the guitars. It was just an amazing time. That every, you know, just the, the evolution of music. Go back six years from this, it was 1966, you know, how different things were. And the evolution of rock music through the blues rock boom, 68, 69, 71, 72. It was just amazing. And Alex Harvey, he was not a young man in those years. Now it wouldn't matter. But this picture of him on the back, can you see that? That one there? Obviously a man in his 40s. That was so uncool. That was really cool with the yellow duster and stuff and the stripy torn rugby shirt. But the back cover made us youngsters think, who is this guy? But he'd been around a while. And there'd been an album prior to this called Framed, which, of course, is a separate story. But what happened was the old grey whistle test happened. Now, as I've mentioned before on this channel, on the website, some of us were lucky enough sometimes to be allowed to stay up late, depending on what was going on at school, exams and homework, to be able to watch this late night show on BBC Two, which showed album based music, this little slot with Whispering Bob Harris. And one particular time in 1973, I can't remember the actual month, no doubt you can find that, but all I know is I remember what happened. He said there was two tracks coming on by this band called the Alex Harvey Band, and they did two songs. They did a one called Next, which was like nothing I'd ever heard before or seen before. And this band, which had like, obviously Alex Harvey, snarling and rasping and being completely off the wall. And Zal Clemenson, a guitarist dressed like a sinister clown with his SG, with a fantastic guitar sound. Um, it was mesmerizing. They also did the Faith Healer. The Faith Healer at school became like an anthem. It was just like amazing. The Faith Healer was just incredible. And everyone was talking about it. Everybody wanted to know about Alex Harvey. Everybody wanted to know if you could go and see them. They were like, they were like our version of Alice Cooper in some ways. They were theatrical. They were different. There was nothing like them. The way they moved on stage and did their kind of synchronized, almost dance stuff. It was kind of like, it was really cool. There was something very special about this band. They were mysterious. It's very hard in those days. No internet, no YouTube. You know, you just had to rely on what appeared in Sounds or Melody Maker or Enemy. And there were like slogans, you know, Vambo Rules Vam and all this kind of stuff. And uh, I think it was um, International Musician. Uh, there was on, on the front, it said, Alex says, don't piss in the water supply or something. And people like latching on to things that Alex said. And then obviously some of the kids at school had got hold of Framed. 
and um, there's a track on there called St Anthony which is just a monumental metallic piece of dense rock metal stuff fantastic um, I think it was the B-side of um, was it the B-side of Sergeant Fury or was it the B-side of Fa no B-side of Faith Healer was it I think um, but I bought that I bought because what, what I did was I, I couldn't afford this at the time at first so I, I took my pocket money and I went to Smith's and I bought the Faith Healer on, on a single which I've still got on my Vertigo single and it was cut down obviously but it was still amazing it was still absolutely amazing and then my friend Paul uh, who's, who's no longer with us his older brother Mark bought this and we were going around to his uh, house after school and he put it on he didn't say a lot Mark but he used to speak through his music so uh, he put this on and you know I was there in a school uniform and so was Paul and he put this on and arranged by Pete Williams, wasn't it? Produced by Phil Wayman, recorded and mixed at Audio International Engineer was Peter Com, Apple Studios Engineer, blah, blah, blah. Swamp Snake. This kind of just rolled out the speakers in this kind of shuffle. Great kind of guitar sound with it. Four minutes and 54 seconds. And it was just a great song. There was nothing else like it. And then a song that would make your parents think, what is what am I what's my child listening to was Gang Bang uh, that was I think that was the B side of um, Sergeant Fury from the next one wasn't it and it I mean this was um, like years ahead of a whole lot of Rosie or um, stuff that Anvil might have done <laughs> it's just like it was really tongue in cheek but it was really cheeky and it was it was obvious as what it was about and I'm I'm a I'm a 14 year old schoolboy, and it was just a very, very, there was nothing, nobody else was writing songs like that. I mean, obviously in the world of heavy metal in the 80s, it was like, you know, fairly normal, wasn't it? But this was not like that. And then we got to hear the album version of The Faith Healer. And that throbbing da, 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 on the keyboard and then the and the you know percussion comes in like um lots of um grasshoppers in the field outside and it just seems to go on for ages just drawing you in this kind of menacing otherworldly mildly sinister but sinister in the way that you are on the side of whatever's going on this is you it is drawing you in and you are part of this you are part of this club this gang that's about to appear this this new movement of music this is something that you'll your parents are going, what is this? And it just goes on and on. And then, of course, those power chords come in. You know, da, da, da. And it's just, and it, again, keeps going. It's just like the perfect introduction. And you want it to be like this. And it's like nothing else. It's not like, um, you know, smoke on the water or a riff like that. We well, you know there's gonna, they're going to repeat it. And then the, the band come in. This was, this, you wanted this to stay where it was. And you were interested to see it was going to go. And I have to say that the production team here, the, the vision of, um, of the Alex Harvey band and how this pulled together uh, by Harvey and McKenna. And then just when you think they're going to come into it now, this kind of double tracked guitars come in, uh, which uh, Zal used again on the Action Strasse track from T Tomorrow Belongs to Me. And it's like a really dense, heavy jug, 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 comes in up around the back of everything. And it, you just know this is it now. This, the stage is right for Alex Harvey to appear. This is his moment, and he does. And he, he releases lyrics that just kind of like, that drip out of his mouth, but also get connected and stuck onto walls around the, around the inside of your head. Um, it's just fantastic lyrics. But it's, again, it's, it's, it's otherworldly, it's metallic, it's rock, it's theatrical. Um, even though you might not have known at the age I was what this was about, you just, you knew it was important. You knew it was important. And seven minutes and 21 seconds, and it is an epic song. It is a song that everyone who's into rock music or into music, you should r roll back, enter your time machine and set the coordinates for 1973 and Alex Harvey and the album Next to listen to the faith healer. It has lost none of its power. 
none of its message, none of its, its you know, put your hands on me and everything, and the guitars, and the, the, the whole production, it's huge. It's not dated to me. It's massive. Um, it's just perfect. At the end of that track, bearing in mind there's only three tracks on that, we head up to a almost like party rock and roll number, and party rock and roll numbers were very in vogue in this time, with Giddy Up a, giddy up a Ding Dong. I loved it. I thought it was great, it was party, it was like fun, it was exciting. Again, it just sounded so accessible, so clever. I love the song, I absolutely love the song. And then we enter into the spoken J. Brill track, Next. You know, I swear on the wet head of my first case of gonorrhea and, you know, and all these kind of really outrageous lines, which they were then. They were then, they're not now, but they were then. The delivery and the way, it, the way it was spoken about, you know, his time in the army or whatever it was. It was outrageous for us. We used to put it on just to scare our parents. And now we put it on to scare our kids. Um, it was just perfect. <laughs> and again, I, 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 found, I think this is one of these albums where every single track works. Every single track is different than the one that precedes it or follows it, but it just gels together as a programme of musical events you know it really really does and that leads into after that when you come to the end of that is vambo marble eye which starts with a wah wah driven guitar riff which which is pure metal from zal fantastic sound and this is the one that kind of brings the kids together vambo marble eye and all the rest of it about being like like a gang leader it's just fantastic the guitar solo in this it's immense and the, during the guitar solo, the bass and the keyboards behind it are just floating ethereally, but the, the sound is enormous. The guitar sound, the lead guitar sound on this album is just fantastic. Absolutely one of the highlights is Vamble Marble Eye. In fact, everything up to this point is just perfect for me. As an Alex Harvey band album, everything, their reputation was just being built in real time. You know, everything about them, the photography, the, the design, that pose by Alex Harvey says everything to me. It's on the Vertigo label. What else could it possibly have gone, you know, at that time with the, um, with the kind of space, that, you know, that design in the middle? It's just perfect. Absolutely perfect. But my favourite track on this album was the last of the Teenage Idols parts one, two, and three. This to me is just genius. On some compilations afterwards, they, they used to fade it out before the part three, which went into kind of 60s doo-wop type thing, but I don't mind that. But the way it starts with the piano-driven ballads before it goes into, and you just, I don't know, being the last of the teenage idols, you just felt the, the kind of nostalgia in this time when rock and roll was still really young. You know, you, you could have gone back, what, 15 years and you're at the birth of rock and roll, that's all you have to do. Now we're like 50 years ago, this is. You went 50 years back in, in 1973, you were before the war. You know, probably the first one. But the last of the teenage idols, and it has some of the... And when it, when it kind of gets into the rock bit, it goes into part two, it has some of the best lyrics ever written and ever composed and sung. Sixteen ducks, only one drake, all got together in the middle of the lake. To this day, that is one of the finest lyrics of all time. I don't know, I don't know why, it's just, because it's so, it's so mad. But it just, it just, it just entered my head. And all the, all the, all the lyrics off this album, too, there was just something about the way Alex Harley delivered it, that you just thought this is really important. The 16 ducks and only one drake, and all got to middle, middle leg, the last of the teenage idols. And it's just, and because the, the, of the, I think it's just before he goes into the bed, and he goes, and he kind of lowers his voice and lets that last word just draw out as it like, it's like full of, is it kind of like anger or, or like, this is it, well, this is it, lads, we're going over the top. But it's just fantastic. It's just fantastic. Um, I've, and before I do in this video, uh, I've played it, obviously, and it's lost none of the magic. You know, sometimes you can have an album and you think, oh, oh I'm going to, well, for me, doing this channel, I'm going to talk about a record, and um, 
I haven't played it for a while, but I've got all my memories in place. But I'll, I'll play it, and sometimes this has happened. I've played it, and I thought, it doesn't feel the same as it did. It happens, can't it? You know, we're older, different mood, uh, the, the weather's different outside. But this, I, I was excited about doing this. I thought, I want to do this. This is a great album. And I put it on, and it, everything, all the, all the levels in my memory and everything just went up went up to the top end again because I just thought, wow. I just thought, wow, this is, you know, it made me, it, it's made me want to play more Alex Harvey. For, for, after this video, I should probably go and play Framed, um, Impossible Dream, uh, Tomorrow Belongs to Me. Those are the main ones on the live one, of course, you know, but this is the one. Next, single sleeve, no gatefold, quite bendy card, isn't it? But it's just fantastic. Everything about it is just brilliant. So that is next by Alex Harvey. Listen to that. Just listen to it. Just put aside 35 minutes, because that's all it is. And let me know what you think. The Faith Healer. You know, the last of the teenage idols. Vambo, Marble Eye. You know, those pictures on the back. What a band. And, uh, you know, that recent uh, video I did on the Sea of Tranquility with Martin Popoff um, and Pete Pardo looking at bands that were big in their home country but never quite became huge anywhere else. I should have mentioned Alex Harvey in a way um, because they were one of them. They were massive over here, you know. You know, seeing them in the 70s, there was nothing else like them. Nobody had any videos running. Uh, there's a video of them doing Framed and you just think, God, if someone had filmed them in 73 or 74, it would still be one of the best rock concerts available to watch. Oh, I can tell you that now. It would still be that good because there is nobody and there hasn't been since like Alex Harvey. And towards the end of his career, things were starting to wobble and fall off, but this bit, everything was a all the planets were in alignment. He was ready to roll and this came out and it's influenced lots of people and probably still does. So thank you very much for watching this video. This has been Alex Harvey. Well, and it's been Phil Asson from that spinning magazine. But it's been about the sensational Alex Harvey band and the album next from 1973. So if you've enjoyed this, tell your friends, share it with everyone you've ever met in your life. Subscribe ring that little bell, become a patron and you'll see these things before anyone else. And remember, music is the healer and the doctor. It is the perfect vitamin pill for the world we live in at the moment. So take care, keep spinning those discs and I shall see you on my next video.